Hey there, I'm your host Lasoi, and in today's video, I will show you how to create a propeller slash fan, whatever you want to call it, but essentially the thing you can see behind me. And this will work by activating this switch, which will slowly begin to spin our fan until it reaches its full speed. Now, if I get within the range of the collision, I will be picked up and shot upwards, just like so. And if I get back down, we can turn this off by standing on the switch once again. It will slow down and then fully stop. And with that said, let's begin. All right, so let's go into the content drawer, right click to create a new folder, and I'll rename this to fan. Now, if we go inside, we can right click and go to blueprint class, selecting actor, calling it BP for blueprint underscore fan. If we go inside of this, we can navigate to our viewport and over here, click the add button in the top left corner, searching for a static mesh. Now over here, we will be building our propeller slash fan. So all of these static meshes will serve as our building blocks with the first being base. Now for the actual shapes, I'm aware you might not have them. So in order to get them, you want to go to the content drawer hit the add button, add feature or content pack, content, starter content. So there you go. And once you have acquired that, we can go back into our viewport and select a shape underscore cylinder. Now for the scale, I'll do two, two and 0 0.1, just like that. And for the material, let's do copper. And if you're not sure how big this would be compared to your player, we can just simply drag it out if you hit the play button, you can see how big how big this would uh, look like. So let's go back into our viewport and select the BP underscore fan, searching for another static mesh. And this will be our rotator, just like so. And for the shape, we will do shape underscore narrow capsule. And for the dimensions, it doesn't really matter as much because we will change them when we parent it but let's do 0 0.4 uh, for the moment. Now let's do the same thing and add more static meshes. This will be, these will be our blades. So blade one, and we will give it a static mesh of shape cube. Now for the scale, one is okay, 0 0.3. And here, once again, this will change, I think when we parent it. So I'll do 1.10, Point one to five. Let's bring it slightly up. And how is that looking? Pretty good. Pretty good. So uh, with that, I will control C, control V. So I have a second one, and we can move this around like there. This one about there, and control V again. Rotate this ninety degrees. Opa. And just let's make sure it's in the center and it is control c control v so there we go we have our blades so let's just um turn them a little bit if i select all of them like so so blade four to blade one and if we hit the grid to be five we can bring this slightly up about there now with that we can turn this back and let's scale it. First, let's parent it. So we have them selected, drag them into the rotator. So now they are parented. parented. So if you move this, all of them will move. Uh, select them and do 0 0.1 to 5 over here. There we go. That's how thin they should be. And for the rotation, we can select them manually. Go into rotation 10 degrees this will be minus 10 degrees and this will be again minus 10 and if i'm going too quick you can pause and just do it at your own pace um there we go so that's how our rotator will look like now for the material we can just simply select all of this and do what was it chrome and that's going to look nice and metallic for us. And if we select the rotator, we also want to parent this into our base. Compile and save that. 
And if we go and hit the play button, we can see how all of this will look. So the next thing we should do is add some functionality. And in order to do that, we need a collision. So select your dp underscore fan and type collision. Now we have three options. We have the box, capsule, and sphere. And the, the one that makes the most sense would be capsule. So select that and give it a scale of 5, 5, and 10. Now this last one, number 10, you can play around with that because whatever you set it to is going to be the height at which your player floats. So just play around with that. 10 for me is going to be pretty good. Now compile and go to the event graph. And over here, we can get rid of these guys. We don't need them. But we do need the capsule. So if we right click on it, add event, add on component begin overlap, and we can right click once again, add on event and overlap. So from here, we first of all need a branch because we want to check is our fan on or off. So with the condition, let's create a new variable, calling it is fan on. And let's drag it into that condition like so. So if it is true, we actually want to do the code. And if it is false, we want to do nothing. So I will make it look a bit neater. And from other actor, we will cast to our player. So for this video, I'm using the third person character. So just use whatever character you have. Let's double click on this and make it like that. And from here, we want to get the character movement. So if we do that, it should be all the way at the bottom. And it is. And from here, we want to set the gravity scale. Now, if you don't know the default gravity scale, it is 1.75. So after we um, come back down in the end overlap, we'll be setting that to default. And we can just do that to make our life easier and a little bit faster. So over here, 1.75 is the default value. Now, if you're not sure what it is, simply go into your player character, which for me would be blueprints. Here we go. Select the BP third person character and type gravity. And there you go. Default 1.75. So let's hit exit. And from here, let's go comment this. That's our end overlap. That's all we have to do. And for begin overlap, after setting the gravity scale, we also want to set the velocity. So there we go, right there. Let's split this value. And of course, play around with this. I found a value on the Z axis of 100 to be pretty good. And now one more thing we need is a add force. So this will give us that initial uh, propellant or shot upwards. Uh, let's just make this look a lot nicer if we can, if it is possible. Uh, yeah, not pretty, but um, you get the idea. So right there. And for the Z, also play around with this minus 100, not a plus, but a minus. So just make sure you have a minus there. And with that, we can comment this code. So if you're not sure how to align it, select this, select that and press Q and it will align for you there. So let's select all of this, comment this, begin, overlap. So with that, now we need to create a custom event. So type custom, add custom event, calling this switch on slash off. So over here, we will create a branch because we want to check once again, is our fan on or off? So let's get this, plug it into the condition. On true, we want to get this once again, set it, and then copy paste that, set it once again. So let me explain. If the fan is on, if it is true, we want to turn it off. If it is false, if the fan not, is not on, we want to turn it on, just like that. And from here, we will create a timeline. So add timeline. And this will be our fun timeline. And this will play it. And this will reverse it just like so. So let's double click inside the timeline. Now you can play around with these values between two and three uh, is good. So I'll select two. 
hit add track, add float track, right click, add key to curve float, select zero enter, zero enter, right click, add key to curve float. Now for the time, it's whatever length you have. So that's two, hit enter. And for the value, we hit one, hit enter. And we can compile, exit. That's our timeline done. And from here, we will do from new track zero, search for a lerp break this node, connect this to alpha, and then I think we should get our rotator. So get that and do set or add a relative rotation. Update goes into here. If we break that, split structure pin, and this will go into our Z. Now, for this value, of course, play around. B, I found this to be a 22.5 to be good. Um, like so. So this is essentially just the rotation angle, how much it's rotating. So play around and see what works for you. Now, from here, we want to get is fun. Uh, and we want to do not boolean. And I'm simply doing that to come out of the true value. And then this will go into a branch. So to get a branch shortcut, hold B and left mouse, if you didn't know that. So let's plug that in here. And then, then I want to, what do I want to do? From false, we will do a set timer by event. And this event, we can come out of here and do add event, add custom event, call this something like fan on perhaps. And from this guy, we will do a, another rotator. So let's grab this and do add relative rotation. And this guy will be set at Z of 22.5. Now make sure you have looping on so it continues to loop. From time, we will drag out and get world delta seconds. And what this node will do is even if your frames are running low, it will make your fan go smoothly. From here, the return value in the set timer by event, we will drag out and do pause timer by handle. So there we go. There we have it. And we actually don't want this to come out of here. We want this to go into our true. And that's pretty much done. So let's just comment this code and I'll go over it. So this will be our animation. All right, so over here, we are checking for the variable is fun on. If it is true, we want to pause it. If it is false, we want to play it. So just vice versa. We play our timeline and then we spin or rotate our rotator by whatever degrees we have here or by the angle. So I have it set at 22.5. And then at the very end, we are just checking for this variable once again. And if the fan is running, we want to pause it. And if it is not running, we want to play it. So that's all here. Let's compile and save. And let's go to create our switch. So over here, we will right click, go to blueprint class, select actor, and call this BP underscore switch. If we double click inside, we will be doing the same thing like we did with our fan. So let's add a static mesh, like so, calling this the base. For the mesh itself, we will do a square. And for the scale, we'll leave it at 1, 1, and then 0 0.05. For the material, let's search for copper, not chrome, copper. Here we go. And, 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 let's select BP underscore switch and add our switch. So let me call that switch. For the mesh, let's do cube 0 0.9. 0 0.9 and then we will do 0 0.1 and let's parent it to the base and give it a chrome color like so so that's looking pretty good and with that we also need to add a collision to be able to use the switch so select pp underscore switch and type collision again three options this one we want the box collision so let's even call it box collision for good practice and for the size, 
let's do 1.4 i believe that was fine yeah 1.4 and the height doesn't really matter that much so that's pretty good with me compile and let's go to the event graph so this will be where the magic happens let's select our box collision right click add event on begin overlap and the same thing end overlap so from here we actually want to create a variable calling it our fan ref or whatever you want to call it and the type is going to be whatever you call your blueprint for your fan so i called mine bp underscore fan selected object reference now make sure this is instance editable because we want to be able to edit um in the game and with that i think that's all so let's get it and do add the custom event we created in the fan and i called it switch on or off so whatever you call yours basically call it here this will go like that and now we want to create our timeline so add timeline calling it our switch timeline so this will play it and then this will reverse it and let's go inside of our timeline for the length one second i find to be good just play around with it yourselves if you want to add track add float track add key to curve this will be zero enter zero enter right click once again time is whatever length you have so one and the value you want to be one as well so compile that exit from the timeline and from the new track zero you will get a lerp like so break this make it go into alpha now b will be the pushed down button so the thing is if you parent it this value will change drastically so for example if i just moved it normally it would be minus 5 minus 10 but you can see it goes into the hundreds so this is minus 200 so minus 100 will be good for me like so now from here we will do switch there we go and do set relative location like so and this will break split struct pin log it into the z value and with that we can comment this so this is our switch like so compile save hit exit and if we go into our content drawer drag this into our game we can see that in here we have a fan reference while selecting the button and we can make it go to our pp underscore fan so both of those guys are now connected if we save it hit play i go here it will slowly begin to spin if i get up i'll start floating and if i get off we can turn this off now as a bonus feature we can add some bonus control to our fan if you want to and all you'd have to do is get from here and do what would this be called air control so set air control boost modifier or set air control and whatever value you give it it'll make it more maneuverable uh movable in the air and with all that guys um that is pretty much it so if you liked the video leave a like if you didn't leave a dislike and as always happy developing